God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon De Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Let us open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, thanking you for another beautiful day. No matter what is going on in the world today, Father God, you have given us another day, another day in which to live, another day in which to praise and worship you. But truly, this is our day of rest, and we choose to rest in you today. Speak, Father God, through the message today. Let your anointing flow. Let the lost come into the kingdom. Let them repent and say, what must I do be saved. Thank you, Father God, for your blessings today and for your Holy Spirit being here this morning. In Jesus' name, we praise you and thank you. Amen. Our message title today is No Time to Waste. I will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 29, which reads as follows. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. That's the King James Version. The Bible in basic English renders it. But I say this, my brothers. The time is short, and from now it will be wise for those who have wives to be as if they had them not. My beloved, by looking at the circumstances in the world today, you can see that time is short. The days are becoming more evil and more evil. Just look around you and take note of what is happening in our world. Disease, crime, riots, cold-blooded murder, is taking place in our great cities. And sin, drugs, and pornography is rampant in our nation. Not our nation only, but throughout the world. There are wars and rumors of wars every day throughout the world. These end time signs are to be noted, not dismissed like, oh, this will pass. No, this world is going to pass. And a lot of people are going to pass from this life to the next that have no hope because they have not Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 says, Hear what God says. When the time came for me to show you favor, I heard you. When the day arrived for me to save you, I helped you. That's from the King James Version. God was there for all those that called upon him. The Good News Bible renders it. Listen, this is the hour to receive God's favor. Today is the day to be saved, to be delivered, to be set free from the punishment that will come upon the face of the earth. For those that walk in sin and all these other things that I talked about in the beginning. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. My beloved, time passes quickly, rapidly, in an instant. So let things that seem to be important to you on this earth pass by undone and take care of your soul and the souls of all your unsaved children, your spouses, your relatives, your co-workers, your friends. My beloved, it's time to get serious about the word of God and to bring the lost into the kingdom. Pray for them today. Pray like you never prayed before. Don't let another go by without kneeling with them. Pray with them fervently that God would save their souls. Minister to them, whether they want to hear it or not. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Remember, the day is short for both you and others to be saved. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. If you have family members that aren't saved, tell them about Jesus. Don't worry about offending them. Tell them the truth because without Christ, they will spend eternity separated from God in the fires of of hell. Now let's go to our main verse, of course. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 29. My beloved, I can't stress enough that the time of our abode here in the earth is short. As I have said before, walk to a cemetery and you will read on the tombstones. Some people or say babies died at birth. Some died at six months, one year. Young children die. Teenagers die. Adults die. Old people die. Every person dies. God has set a time, but man doesn't know God's time. Man has said that people would prosper, but not everybody prospers. Not everybody makes the correct decisions. Not everybody walks in righteousness. Not everybody is correct in the eyes of God. Not everybody chooses righteousness. Of course, not everybody 
chooses unrighteousness. There are those that come out of sin. There are those that rather live in sin. You only have two types of people in the world, good and evil. There is no middle ground. You're either in Christ or out of Christ. You either believe God or you don't believe God. You're either saved or you're unsaved. Know that today could be your final day on the face of the earth. Are you going to make a decision to have life through Jesus Christ or to have death through Satan? The choice is yours. It talks about, but this I say. See, my beloved, whether you're married or not, that's got the whole point. It is, what condition are you living in? What are you yielding to? What are you putting your affections on? Yes, I love my wife. I take care of my wife. But God is number one in my life. Because if God is not number one, I can't have a good relationship with my wife. Or my wife can't have a good relationship with me as her husband. Without God being number one, you can't be godly. Without Christ as your Savior, you can't love God. You can't love your wife. You can't love your husband without loving Christ. Period. Because when you submit to Christ and you receive Him as your Savior and Lord, you become a new creation. The old is past. All things become new, which means you have a change of mind, a change of spirit, a change of heart. Without that change through Christ, you cannot love God or your family the way God intended you to do. My beloved, we should be reminded that life rushes to a close. And the most important thing mankind should be doing is preparing to die. Because death closes this life and opens another. It closes this life, which is temporal, and opens the door to eternity. Where are you going to spend eternity when you depart from this life? The time is short. Let me say this. Time is contracted. God's in control. And it is drawn to a narrow path. The gate to eternal life is say narrow. And the path is straight and narrow. But the way to the sinful pleasures of this world are wide. The gate is wide. And the path is is wide open. And more people are going down that path through that gate than are going through the narrow and straight way. They're having a great time on the way to hell. They're having a great time in the temporal instead of the eternal. You can set up your eternal path in this life through going through that straight gate, walking down that narrow path. That means you will have blessings for eternity with Christ and all the other Christians through eternity. But when you choose that wide gate, that wide path, where you can go wherever you want to go and do whatever you want to do, you are planning for eternity without God, but with eternal punishment. Time is short. What are you engaging in today? What type of lifestyle do you have? Is it one of sinfulness or is it one of righteousness? Time is short compared to eternity. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7 says, The end of things is near. You must be self-controlled and alert and be able to pray. Let me stress about being able to pray. If you are involved in all the earthly things, if you are involved in adversities, in fear, in mongering, in drunkenness, pornography, filthiness, you don't have time to pray. You can't have time to pray because... You are not concentrating on the things of God. It's time to be self-controlled and alert or sober, knowing what's going on around you and looking at the events that are taking place and taking item of the things that are taking place and see how they match up with your life, with Scripture, with the world system. Compare these things to God's plan for your life or God's plan for creation. You know, abstinence is very important in the kingdom of God. Another word for abstinence is temperance. That will help you concentrate on the things of God. That will help you be watchful. That will help you to pray. So watch and pray that you may not be left behind. What talks about it remaineth. That means the remainder is or this is a consequence from this consideration of the shortness of time. Remaineth. 
There remaineth no time for drunkenness, for debauchery, for sinfulness. It's time to come clean. It's like sometimes I'll watch a crime movie and they'll say, look, we know you committed the murder. It's time for you to confess, to come clean. Because here's all the evidence. Your life says that you are sinful. You are involved in all the, all the sinfulness. You are involved in the flesh. It's time to come clean and look at yourself and judge yourself according to the word of God. That's what needs to be done. And you will see whether your life is lining up with the word of God or it is not. It talks about, but they that have wives. And I know when I read the scripture, I said, what do you mean, my wife? Get rid of my wife? Get rid of my family? No, that's not what is being said here. I mean, set your priorities. As I said, God first. Because without God, nothing is going to work out. Yeah. A lot of people ask God to send them a wife. And he sends them a wife. And people put the wife or the spouse in front of God, which is wrong. They use God as a tool, as a mechanism, as a door to get something from God. And don't think you're going to fool God. God knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows your spirit. He knows everything about you. As they say, you can run, but you can't hide. So when we talk about both they that have wives, this doesn't mean that they ought to treat them with unkindness or neglect or fail in their duties of love and fidelity. No, nothing to do with that. It is to be taken in a general sense as an example, okay, that they were to live above the world and be heavenly minded. Think about eternity with Christ. My beloved, our life, put it this way, our existence in this world is a trial. And we all go through this trial. And you will be either guilty or innocent, either one. If you are guilty and you die, you face the punishment. If you are innocent when you die, you go to be with God, with Christ for eternity. If you die guilty in this world, in the next world, you're still guilty. If you die innocent in this world, you're still innocent in the world to come. It's not hard to figure out. There is no salvation in the life to come. The way you die is the way you are judged. That will never change because the word of God is eternal. And no matter what man says, it cannot change it. No matter what man says, the outcome will never change. So, everyone in the world, as I said, is on trial. The way you're judged here is the way you are judged in eternity. Either guilty or innocent. See, our earthly attachments and cares draw away our affections from God. Do you notice how hard it is to pray when you're wrapped up in the world, when you're worried about the world? when you're facing monetary problems, when you're facing health problems, you just concentrate on that and you don't think about praying. Or you may say, God help me, but I'm talking about praying. I'm not talking about just saying a few breath prayers. I'm talking about serious prayer to God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. And you cannot go to the Father without going to Christ. Instead of being the occasion for alienating our affections from God, they should be, and they might be, the means of binding us more firmly and entirely to Him and to His cause. Look at everything as an opportunity to serve God. You know, you can serve God during your times of adversity, during your times of sickness. You can serve God. You can be a witness to the goodness of God. Remember, God won't put any more on you than what you are able to handle. He never will. But let me say this, even in a Christian community, many Christians live for their wives and children only instead of living for God. Does that mean they're going to hell? No. If, if you're a Christian, you're going to heaven. But what about the rewards when you leave this life? You won't have any. You won't have any crowns. We're going to give our crowns to Christ. You're not going to be able to give him any crowns because you would not have gained any crowns because you put everything first. If you don't put God first, you won't have any rewards in heaven. I'm talking about if you're a Christian. Now, in this life, if you're not a Christian, you don't call on God through Jesus Christ, you're lost, and you will end up in a lake of fire and brimstone. As a Christian, you will suffer the loss of rewards, but yet you will be in heaven. But why settle for less when there was so much to gain? Why? 
Do you remember, I know a lot of you my age, of course, remember TikTok. That's the clock. You had the swinging pendulum. Click, click, click. And after whatever you set it for, for the hour, the rooster would come out. And crow. Okay. Every tick of that clock is time that you will never see again. You can never recuperate that time. When I started this message this morning, I will never recuperate that time back that I'm preaching this message so far. It's gone into eternity past. But I have time in the future. But I only have the time that God allows me to have. This could be my last message. I could preach a hundred more messages. I have no idea. The thing is that I have to be ready to meet my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Don't wait. Time is too short. Don't waste another minute. As Christians, don't waste another second of telling someone about Jesus Christ that they may not pass into eternity without hope and enter into the lake of fire. We are to begin instantly, instantly. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can accomplish today. Every one of you watching this video, listening to the audio, is surrounded by people that are lost. Many of you that are listening are lost, but God has had you Listen or view this message. What are you going to do with the information that God has given you through this message? You're going to waste it and let it go by the wayside? Or are you going to entertain it and change your life around for Christ? Are you going to spare yourself and others from the torments of hell? Or are you going to face them and experience them? Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15. This is what I'm going to close with. It says... If you hear God's voice today, don't be stubborn as your ancestors were when they rebelled against God. Oh, I don't need God. Oh, that, that crazy preacher, he's always preaching about hell. He's always preaching about the lake of fire. He's always preaching about sinfulness. He's always preaching about drunkenness. He's always preaching to get about pornography. He's always preaching about all these things. Yes, because that's what the Word of God says. And I'm obedient to the Word of God. Am I perfect? No. But I'm God's servant. And I will serve Him. I will call upon him and I will pray to him until I take my last breath. So it's urgent that lost souls are saved and spared from the lake of fire. It's time for us as Christians to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. I beloved, when the lost are saved, Jesus Christ is glorified in all. You see, Jesus came to glorify the Father. We are here to glorify Christ. Remember, when we do what God's called us to do, Satan is totally defeated and heaven is filled with saved people people. In this life, we call them Christians, saints, brethren, okay? You know, everybody that you call brother isn't your brother. They are only your brother in the Christian faith if Jesus Christ is their Savior and Lord. So if you have never received Christ as your Savior and Lord, that means you have never repented. And I want to offer you the opportunity to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. And if you like to do that today, there's a criteria. You must be sorry for your sins, repent of your sins, and ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior and Lord. You must believe that he was crucified, died, buried, and rose from the dead on the third day and ascended into heaven. If you want to believe that today, I want to lead you in a prayer. Please think about the seriousness of this prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you as a sinner. I heard the message today and it has touched my heart. I didn't realize that my time is so short in this life that I could die tomorrow. You know, I realize that I don't have any time to waste because the next second isn't promised to me. The next hour, the next 24 hours, the next day isn't promised to me. The next year, nothing is promised to me. I don't want to go to the lake of fire when I die. I don't want to be tormented for eternity. I don't want to stand before God at the great white throne judgment and be condemned. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be pronounced guilty. Therefore, I repent of my sins. I ask you to save me today. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Now, only through him can I get to heaven. I believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day for my justification and ascended into heaven as God sitting at the right hand of God the Father in all power and majesty from where he should come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I confess that today. And I believe that through my repentance, my confession and profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I have become a Christian. And I thank you for saving me today. 
God, lead me and guide me in the path that you have for me to, to go down. Help me to minister to my family, to tell them the truth, to be a loving husband, a loving wife, a loving father, a loving friend to all, but to be serious about someone's eternal destiny and to let my light shine in this world, that others will see my light. Others will see the image of Jesus Christ in me and say, what must I do to be saved? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My beloved, if you receive Christ today as your Savior and Lord, because you truly repented, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor or one of his elders. Tell them what happened. Ask them to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask them to mentor you. Ask them to give your Bible. Attend church. Learn. Tell others about Jesus Christ. Be a witness to those that are dying without hope. And what else I would like you to do is email me. You can reach me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also reach me through our websites at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmagothian.com. Now, you can follow us on YouTube. You can follow us on Spreaker. But what I suggest is just Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria or Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you. Our message has been no time to waste from 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 29. You can also read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, and Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15. God bless you, my beloved, and please let me hear from you.